Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hope you all, all are doing well today. Happy Monday to you and thank you for watching The Crumbs. Again, this is our daily devotional, a devotional that has been placed on my husband's heart, Pastor James P. Clements, the pastor of True Praise Cathedral of New Jersey, where this um, daily devotional is based on the passage out of Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28, where it's talking about the faith of the Canaanite woman. I encourage you to go back and read that when you can, as it will bless you as it has blessed us. So today, um, I'm bringing the crumbs for, to you today. Not my, not my husband today, but I'll be bringing it to you today out of James. We're going to go to James, the, the fifth chapter, and we're going to look at one verse. We're going to look at the 16th verse. I'm going to read it out of three different versions just so that we can see all the different ways how we can open this and how we can expand our minds just in this one verse. The first version I'm going to look at is the King James Version where it says that we are to confess your faults. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That word fervent means great intensity. So that passage, the second part of verse 16 says, the effectual fervent or the effectual intensity of a prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Thank you, Lord. And then in the NIV version, the New International Version, it says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. How many of us want to live in that power and to live effective lives for God? Thank you, Lord. And then the last version I want to read is the New Living Translation, where it says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Thank God for his word, for it's always right and never changes. Thank you, Lord. So in this passage, there are two requirements that we have to do to produce results or to produce the power, the great power that worketh within us. Those two things are we are to confess and we are to pray. We are to confess our faults, confess our wrongdoings, and then we are to pray about it. All right. And that goes both ways, whether you're confessing to someone or someone is confessing to you. If someone is confessing to you, we are to pray for them after that confession. When we confess to somebody else, they're to pray for us. You know, that prayer is so important because that releases us. We're giving that that confession to God and we're being released of that burden, of that weight. So I don't even think I said my subject or my topic today is letting go of those weights that are holding you down, letting go of what's weighing you down. Amen. Our responsibility as a believer in Christ is that we are to be in a right relationship with him. He's not asking us to be perfect. To be perfect. He's asking us to lay down these weights. Our responsibility is when God shows us something about ourselves, something that we need to confess, we are required, we are told to be humble about it, to admit it, to release it, and then to move on, let it go. To be humble enough to admit it, to release it, and to move on. Many times we have issues, unresolved issues, that interfere with our connection with God. I know I personally 
this has ministered to me on so many different levels. And I'm sure that it's maybe ministering to you too. These things that are weighing us down, these things that we have not confessed to um, the person that we hurt, it prohibits and it limits our prayer life. But the Bible says that the earnest prayer of a person, of a righteous man, has great power. And it produces, which that means that we're able to see results, positive results in our lives. That's where we all should strive to be, to see those positive, those great results. Releasing those weights that have been debilitating our ability to connect with God. Sometimes it's not the enemy that's interfering with our ability to produce results by walking in the power. It's us. It's the weights that we are holding on to because we refuse to confess it. It's time that we confess so that we can restore that relationship, that right connection with God. When we carry these weights, when we carry these bags, it debilitates us. We have bags and bags of stuff that we're holding. My God, bags and bags of stuff that we might, may, have been hold, may have been holding for years, for decades. And all it's doing is prohibiting us from moving to the next season. It's sta staunching us, not staunching us, but making us stagnant um, from moving to where God has called us to be. What is the baggage that I'm talking about? Past hurts, rejection, unforgiveness, not forgiving others and ourselves. Lord, deliver us from unforgiveness. Have mercy on us, God. Some of us have been carrying these weights again, like I said, for so long that it, now it feels normal to us. It's not normal, my brothers and sisters. It's not normal that we are carrying these weights. It's causing us to become numb. Some of us have been so accustomed to holding on to hurts and disappointments that we have become desensitized. And God wants to give us our sensitivity back. He wants to put our hearts back together again, where it's been broken, where disappointment has caused us to just put these things in bags and we decide, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it later. No, today is later. God wants to heal our numbness. He wants us to stop dumping these things in these bags and not dealing with them. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, Lord, to lay these weights at your feet. Because he says in 1 Peter 5, 7, that we can cast all of our cares upon him before he care, because he cares for us. Thank you, Jesus. So the weights that we're carrying, let them go in the name of Jesus. Past disappointments, past hurts, past rejections. I'm not only talking to you, I'm talking to myself. God has ministered so heavily on this with me because so many times... I have not dealt with hurts of my past, maybe from my teenage years, from my early 20s, and maybe even recently, God has not, God has, is telling me that it's time to let it go because there's a new season that he wants to bring me in. There's a new season that he wants to bring you in. There's a new realm that he wants to take us to. And we thank God, we thank God that we are able to go back and fix. We're able to go back and fix it. We thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to lay these weights at your feet. We're able to confess our sins, to talk to you about it, to talk to that person about it, to release it and let it go. It's time to let it go, my brothers and sisters so that we can go into the next higher heights that God has called us to be in. God bless you on today. 
My prayer is for you that you will let go of these weights, that you will let go of the baggage that has been weighing you down. Be free in Christ, for there is liberty in his freedom. Amen. God bless you.